Picking up where we left off in part one, we're ready to add chords and some melody to this project. Let's start with a piano or other chording instrument to play some chords that will complement our bass track. Start with an E minor chord in root position, like this. Then move the top two notes up. This will create an A minor chord in second inversion. Then go back to the E minor chord. To wrap it up, we'll add this chord, B7. I know, it's a new one. Here's the rule. The fifth of the chord can sometimes be replaced by the seventh, especially when the chord is the five chord in the key. We're in E minor, so if E is one, the five of E is B. A B chord is spelled B, D sharp, and F sharp. We're replacing the F sharp with an A. Now I know what you're thinking. Why does a B chord have a D sharp and an F sharp in it? Let's, let's answer that. Play the first chord I ever showed you, C. Now move each note down by a half step. No, a half step. Sure, the C goes to B, but there's no black key in between. The E has to go to D sharp, and the G has to go to F sharp. So, I could play the progression with this plain old B chord, like this. E minor, A minor, E minor, B in root position. It works, but the voice leading isn't great, so let's try it again with the B chord in an inversion to smooth it out. The note B, way up here, is a common tone in our E minor chord, so let's leave that alone. The D sharp and the F sharp are only a half step away. So here's the sequence with the B chord in first inversion. E minor, A minor, second inversion, back to E minor, and B in first inversion. This is perfectly acceptable. But let's try subbing the seventh, A, for the fifth, F sharp. Take out the F sharp and replace it with the A. There's a lot more tension there, and instead of both voices moving down, only one moves down. The other moves up. This is called contrary motion, and it makes the chord changes a lot more interesting. If you don't want to do this on the piano, you can do it on push, using chord shapes you already know. When we did our C and F chords project with push, we were in the key of C. Now we're in the key of E minor, so we have to change the scale setting in push before we record. Tap the Scales button, and then use the green buttons to select E as our key. Then select the harmonic minor scale. Now the blue pads are all E's, and we can play our old familiar shapes. In the key of C major, this triangle shape used to be our C chord. But since we changed the scale, it's now an E minor chord. When we move these top two notes up, we get an A minor chord. Move back to E, and now go to the B chord by doing this. Or the B7 chord by doing this. Spice up your chord progression with an arpeggiator or some delay effect if you want to. Or you could sidechain your hi-hat into the piano sound by adding a compressor from the effects menu. I'm going to add the Brute Compression preset to the piano track. And then route the audio from the drum kit like we did before. But I'm going to choose the hi-hat instead of the kick. Here's what that sounds like. Finally, we're going to add a melody to our project, and we're going to use a different scale to play with, the minor pentatonic scale. Check out this video featuring Bobby McFerrin. Talking about expectations? Expectations. Watch. Ba, ba. Bye.
about that is regardless of where I am anywhere every audience gets that but it doesn't matter you know that's just you know the pentatonic scale for some reason if you're looking for a job in neuroscience I think <laughs> <laughs> okay so dial up a lead sound I like this bright saw lead in the synth lead folder as long as you're in the key of E minor all these blue pads are E's and will sound great against our chord progression. Try to come up with a melody that sits on top of the four bar progression. Before you submit, make sure you have all of these criteria in your project. Good luck. <laughs> 